Hi, this is CBRadioMagazine.com, and today we're going to go through the software that comes with the CRE 8900 radio. This is the programming software, and we've stuck the disc into the computer. And this is what came up. It's going to install the software, and I'll have it create a desktop icon. This is on a Windows XP computer. It says that it's finished, and we'll launch the software. Now, if you do purchase the software, it's an optional item uh, with this radio. You don't need it to run the radio, but it does open up some features that you can uh, program the radio for. You uh, would get your USB cable that comes with the software package, and you'd plug one in into your computer and the other in into the radio. You have the radio turned off when you do this. You then uh, install your software, fire up your software and everything else, and once your software is up and running, then you turn on the radio. All right, guys, once you get your radio hooked up to the computer via, uh, via the USB cable, hopefully the uh, computer finds the proper drivers and everything and gets that all set up, then we're ready to uh, start our software. So this is the software for the CRE8900, and the radio is hooked up, so we power on the radio, and it should uh, recognize the radio. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and read from the radio. It'll say, do you want to read the data? And we say yes, and it pops up. It'll start reading all the data from the radio. So it's going to pull in our current frequencies, uh, radio information, current settings, all that stuff, which is set up stock from the factory right now. So it says read data completed. And the first uh, thing here we have is our channel information screen. <clears throat> the screen's going to show us our different bands, so A through F, just like the band uh, controller on the radio itself. It also shows us our emergency channel uh, option. And we can go through and you'll see the different frequencies change as we go into each band. So D band is the 11 meter band. Our emergency channel is set to 9, but you can set it to whatever frequency you want. So that little EMG button on the radio, when you press it, it automatically defaults to channel 9. For instance, let's say channel 38 is my favorite frequency, and I want to be able to jump to that frequency whenever I'm in this band from anywhere. So what I can do is I can go down here and set 38 as my emergency frequency. So what it'll do now is if I'm on channel 10 and I say, hey, hit my EMG button, it's going to take me to channel 38 automatically. So kind of cool. Um, of course, if there's an emergency, it's not going to do much for you on channel 38. You might want that channel 9 function, so be aware of that. Other cool things about the software. You can enable or disable uh, echo. So you could say, hey, on channel 38, I do not want to ever use echo. That's silly because I'm on sideband. So you can turn off the echo and disable it. Then we will not be able to turn the echo on and make it work on channel 38 when we're on that frequency. So if you have your echo on on these other frequencies and you change to single sideband and drop up to 38 or whatever, it will stop your echo from working. Um, you can have your uh, high cut, whatever, enabled or disabled uh, for certain frequencies, noise blank, roger beep, scan, all of these types of things. You can control this from in here. Now, here's the cool stuff. Um, right now, if you buy this radio and you don't get the software, and you go to channel 40 and you flip down, the next channel takes you is back to channel 1. But let's say we don't want to have to touch the band selector to go up to the free band. We want to be able just to keep turning the knob or just uh, keep going up with the frequencies using the microphone. What we're going to do is we're going to make a channel 41, and we're going to make it uh, 415. And it added it in there. Now you can add up to 60 uh, total channels. So let's say we liked uh, also talking on 4255, uh, 425, sorry, and we also like talking on 27555. Now let's say I don't want to have to change bands to go to my favorite 10 meter frequencies as well. So I can go 284 there. So we're going to add in a couple addition frequencies, uh, 4 and 5. So there we go. Um, so we've done that on band D. We've, uh, I'm not going to mess a whole lot with these things, but I'm showing you, you can add these additional channels, and I'll show you what happens when we power on the radio again. Um, just for interest's sake, what we'll do is we'll go to uh, band C, and let's say we don't want all these channels on there. Um, let's say we want to change this one so it's only got 
couple of frequencies on it. I don't know why you'd necessarily do this, but it's kind of cool. So we can delete uh, a lot of the channels in the C band. Now you can set up any one of these bands to do anything you want. You can tell A to be your 11 meter. You can tell B to be your free band. You can do a mix between 11 meter free band and ham radio uh, bands on uh, D. You know, you can do whatever you want. You can change these however you want it. So I've changed band C to only have five channels on it now. Um, our 11 meter band has all of these on there. And I've also added in those additional channels at the end of it or frequencies. And uh, so that's how you can mess with that information and the channel information. Now, we're going to go to Options and Features. <clears throat> when I went into the menu functions on the radio and showed you all that stuff earlier, this is a cool place where you can change all that stuff automatically um, or set it up however you want. So, microphone gain, we can set that uh, at maximum if we wanted. Our uh, um, uh, talkback, we can set that up however we want it. So we could say, oh, you know, five was good for that. We can change our Roger Beep frequency. You know, we can go up here and change it to uh, a little bit higher, and we can go to a sh real quick Roger Beep. Here we can change our side tone. Uh, we can change our frequency steps, LCD display. You can even change your SWR protect values, which is pretty cool. So you can tell it, hey, if my SWR goes over a, you know, four, you know, stop from transmitting. Um, next up is your minimum voltage. So you can say nine volts, that's too low. Um, 11 volts, if my radio goes below, you know, voltage that goes below 11 volts, shut down the transmitter. Um, so you can set up all that kind of cool stuff and uh, you can go through and adjust the frequency, clarifier modes, push modes, all these different types of things. Um, you can change the color uh, for your backlight color. You can change the beep volume on the uh, beeping of the radio when it beeps, uh, if you have it set up to beep with that BP button. Over here you can turn your SWR uh, protect on and off, your DC protect on and off. One of the things is, uh, I showed you earlier, the radio remembers what you do on each frequency. And in some cases that can be really cool, um, in some cases it can be kind of annoying. So if you turn this off, you can select which things you want uh, to have be universal. So we can say, if I turn my Roger Beep on, I want it to work across all frequencies. If I press noise blank A and L, I also want that to work across all frequencies. Same thing with high cut. Um, same thing with echo. Uh, so, you know, you don't want it just to be remembering each frequency, so you have to press this every time you switch around. If you want this on all the time, on all of them, or on or off, you would uh, remove this single change data and then select your individual items. So now we can close this. Um, the uh, local information thing, you can add in your own information if you want to for the radio. Uh, I don't know if you want to put your personal information on there, but you can put your handle or whatever. Uh, only person that would ever see it is someone with software. The last one is the embedded message here, which is pretty cool. This shows the radio information, the radio type. It shows the frequency range. It shows uh, the serial number. It shows the date that the radio was produced. And it also shows which version of the software you have on the radio. That's kind of cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually um, write to the radio. So we selected that and we're going to write our data. And you'll see it's uploading all the information from the computer to the radio. And as soon as it finishes, what we'll do is we'll turn the radio back on. And well, what we'll do is we'll turn it off, we'll disconnect it from the computer. Of course, uh, do your safe to disconnect options and everything, whatever system you're using. And now we're going to show you the cool stuff. All right, so here we go. We've reprogrammed the radio. We're on the D band. And uh, first thing I'll show you is normally when we were on the D band before, if we went to channel 41 or channel 40 and we switched, we'd go back to channel 1. Well, now you can see we jumped up to channel 41 and it's showing the frequency that we programmed it for 42, the next frequency we picked. Now you can see it jumped up to 555, which you picked, that's 43. Now we're up in the 10 meter range, and now it's back channel 1 because we've only selected 46 channels. So, very cool uh, features to be able to do that. Now, if we go over to band C, it goes back to channel 1 here, and if you remember, we deleted a bunch of the channels. Hey, look at that. It only has five channels or frequencies in that particular range on the C1, so we went in and changed that. 
So uh, very cool to be able to go in and do these types of changes to the radio. Um, lots of different options, you know, you can go through and change these and really customize the, the frequencies or how you want to do it. You know, most radios, if you want to change between different uh, bands, free band and your CB, you have to actually, you know, go back and forth with your band selector. But uh, going at it this way, you can actually just make it continuous to go right up to the next one. All right, the last thing we'll show you is just uh, the universal uh, uh, options for when you turn on or off the noise blank, Roger Beep, those things. Before, it was remembering each frequency that you made those changes to. And now, if we press noise blank ANL, it's on for all of the frequencies. So uh, you can go in in the software and make that change, which is nice because if you want it on for all of your frequencies, you don't want to have to go in and select each one. That's where the software comes in really handy. Um, so, you know, the, uh, the software is the, the way to go. If you buy this radio from the factory and you don't have the software and you want to uh, enable it for 11 meters, here's what you do. So you start off, you press function and EMG, and you turn on the power. This is going to give you a one band, two band option. One band is uh, a 10 meter band. Two band is the expended, uh, extended export free band. What you do now is we select the one, we'll say function, we hold it in. It'll go to end, we'll turn off the radio. We'll turn it back on and it will have defaulted to the uh, 10 meter band. Some of the options are on automatically now. So uh, there we are, we're now in the 10 meter band. You cannot get to the 11 meter frequencies uh, or free band from this band when you have it in this setting. Also keep aware if you have software and you set up everything the way you want it uh, and then you uh, do this change this way, it actually deletes the information. This is kind of a factory reset. So we want to go to the 11 meter band. We'll turn off the radio. We'll hold down the function and the EMG button together. Power it on. It says band one. We'll pick band two. We uh, hold in that function button again. Radio says end. We turn it off and we turn it back on. And now, when we go to our D-band, you'll see we're in our four, standard 40 channels. So that's how you uh, modify the radio um, for 11 meters if you don't have the software. Once again, the software is what makes it really cool, uh, at least in this type of programming scenario, to give it those uh, free band frequencies just on the continuous tuning in that sense. So I'd say, you know, spend the extra 30 bucks on the software. You know, if you're going to have this radio long term, it's worth it to be able to kind of mess around and add those options. And then also, when you sell the radio, it'll increase the value to whoever you sell it to. Uh, you know, these radios might be made for, you know, five years or something, and then there's a new version that comes out, and maybe these become obsolete. You want to be able to sell your radio with the software if the software gets hard to get later or something. So... Very cool, uh, neat features for the software options and being able to go in and make those types of changes and uh, hopefully you guys found this useful. Once again, this is a CRE8900 and this was the software function video.